So I suppose the million dollar question, would you buy one yourself? Would you go out and buy, oh nice, I like that. Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And in the last film about weird weapons, I showed you this, the pole axe from the British Museum. This time, we're back with a sparring version. So I'm gonna go down and see Matt at his fight school where he teaches, and we're gonna see who wants to hit who with this. Let's go. So this is the second part of our Weird Medieval Weapons series. Come back with some sparring versions and the rubber components which I have chopped around, I must confess, are from Tempest Fugitives. So thank you very much Tempest Fugitives and they come more beautiful than this. Uh, like I say, I've just changed them to suit this. So first up, Matt and Gavin are going to spar with them. So they're going to go hammer on hammer because one of your theories is that they're judicial. Well, I think they're trial by combat, uh, not trial by combat so much as um, knightly combat, kind of uh, fighting at the barriers, fighting a defence, that kind of thing. So I think that they're specialised dueling weapons, okay. yeah. So we'll try that, and then I've got a theory that this hook on the back uh, might actually be for blade catching, so we're going to try longsword against poleaxe as well. So um, Matt can't really do much talking at the moment. <laughs> so we're going to put Matt, Matt and Gavin up against each other, and then we're going to come back and we'll... Uh, do our usual thing and we'll commentate on a couple of other people fighting. We've just watched a little bit of Matt and Gavin uh, sparring with them and we're going to get his insights in a little bit while we watch other people. So Matt and I will sort of like watch and commentate a bit and uh, sparrers, take it away please. Nice. Pop that was popped straight to the yeah, head, yeah, yeah, immediately. Which is a classic longsword technique as well. I mean, the, a lot of the techniques for poleaxe and longsword are actually very, very similar. You just modify them slightly for the weapon length. And that was back on the shoulder, wasn't it then? Yeah. So that was Valerie did yeah. something interesting. Yeah, she caught she, on the spike. weapon. Yes, yeah. I saw. Which is not something you can do with the sword. Oh. But how did you find it in a general sense? Was it, okay, interesting to fight with, but were there aspects you really liked or disliked? It felt like a clunky, short, heavy longsword. Right, so, so it felt like a bad weapon. <laughs> but no, not necessarily, because especially in armour, you want to hit someone with, with force. Yeah. And swords actually famously aren't very good, um, certainly for hitting against armour. And I actually felt, um, in terms of the repertoire, oh. yeah. because of the proportions and size of the weapon, it's very similar to longsword. I think we both agree it's not English Civil War era, it's not mid-17th century. I don't, right? I don't think it can be. I mean, I think the only way it could possibly fit in the 17th century is for some hmm. sort of one-off tournaments or something, which they did occasionally do, hmm. even in the 17th century. So we think it's probably not 17th century, so let's assume that it's, let's, let's say, late 15th. You think it's probably judicial duel? After having fought with it, do you feel that, or is it still a good melee weapon? I don't think it's judicial duel because there weren't oh. any judicial oh, okay. duels in that Sorry. period anymore but I think it's a tournament right I think it's a, absolutely a tournament weapon and I think it's probably Tudor and I think there's a very good chance it comes from Henry VIII's time okay. because we know that tournaments just were massive in fairness even <laughs> in Elizabeth's time tournaments were still big you know defending a staircase that was a comment that somebody made yeah which is maybe I mean it's you know it's short um I mean, I, someone asked me if I could use it like a Montante, and that, of course you don't have the length and you don't have the speed to do that. No. So it it's, um, doesn't feel like that for me. It's an armoured fighting weapon, I feel sure, because 
It's seven and a half pounds. I mean, these aren't, but the, 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 the original are seven, and, seven, seven and a half pounds. That's so heavy yeah. for a weapon of that size. I th and actually, Matt, this is a really important point to make as well. This is a sparring version, and some weapons, like a sword, you can make to be basically equivalent. You can make them blunt, yeah. This you cannot make and fight safely with. I mean, it's the weight of a sledgehammer. Yeah. You can't have these guys wearing, certainly yeah. wearing the fencing, even wearing this, yeah. hitting each other with sledgehammers. We can't learn everything we could about the real weapon with sparring versions, which we could with a sparring sword. It's, and it's, it's a problem with all pole weapons, really. Mm -hmm. Even quarterstaff, which doesn't have any added weights, it's very difficult to spar quarterstaff safely because the amount of leverage mm. involved. With this, it's not so much a case of the leverage, it's more just a question of the weight, yeah. Mm. But that was interesting, there was, there was definite sword techniques going on there. Oh yeah. I mean, um, with this size of weapon with a sword-like crossguard... Oh, uh, that's nice. There you go, half-sorting, yeah. disarm. You're going to get sword techniques, very recognisable sword techniques. The big difference, of course, is that Warhammer head. Yeah. Well, it gives you a hooking ability at the end, a binding ability, doesn't it? And the Absolutely, sword just doesn't. Yeah. And against armour, it gives you a more potent strike. So, I mean, that's one of the things you can say as well. When, when you're talking about a long sword, in the treatises, we don't see many strikes given with oh, a long sword. That was lovely. Did you see right. that? They both got hooked up on each other. They were both <laughs> trying to disengage. So, nice. with the long sword, you don't see many strikes in armour, but oh. with these, they're now potent enough that you can ironically, use them like a sword again in armour because you can strike with enough force with yeah. these that actually have some effect. One of the things that surprised me about this was because of its short size, you think, well, it's, that's mm. only a disadvantage for a pole axe, but actually because of its short size, you can turn it around very, very quickly. But, yeah, handy. So in, instead of half swording, if it was a sword, it's actually quite nimble. Well, it's like, in, in that sense, it's like the... The uh, staff weapon equivalent of a cat's bauger or something. It's a, yeah, you know, like a yeah, brawling weapon. Yeah, yeah. But that's one of the reasons I mentioned about house clearance or, yeah, or street fighting yeah. or whatever. Is it, is it a good enclosed space weapon? Possibly. And, and you know, I, one of my theories is that it was used for... Uh, they had a certain tournament fighting format where they fought across a barrier. Yeah. So you couldn't close and grapple and you were either side of a fence. And in that situation, you can see that a normal length pole axe, a long pole axe, might not be very effective, but one of these, it might be a way of going, well, we can give it some advantages and still fight over a barrier very well and maybe be a little bit quicker, a little bit more nimbler than a, than a full-length pole axe. Mm. Because not having the back end, the cube sticking out at the back, does mean you can turn it around in ways that you can't. That's a very interesting point, because I was talking to one of the guys earlier who'd been messing with this, mm. and he was saying, I think this would be great if you put a spike on the end. Yeah. And then we were watching another guy messing with it, and yeah. he kept on bringing the pommel really close to himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was thinking, actually, you wouldn't want a spike no. on the end. Now, Matt, we've swapped out, and we've got a guy with a feather and the axe, and we're just going to see if this hook can come into play in any way. My personal pet theory, because I can't work out what it's for. So in this matching, uh, the pole axe has now got a reach disadvantage because the long sword's yep. longer, it's nimbler, it's lighter. But that being said, if, if they were both in armour, then the pole axe has got an advantage yeah. in armour. I think one of my questions is, if that hook was for trapping a blade, when you've trapped it, what do you do? Well, because then you can't use your weapon. No, no, OK. Good point, <laughs> good point. I don't know, it's just one of those daft things. I cannot... The only thing that somebody has suggested that I think is it vaguely valid, but I don't think is valid, is that it's a display hook for the wall. Why well, put that on the weapon, though? But, I mean, it's, it's not a hanging hook, I'll swear blind. It could be a transport hook for putting on a saddle. So, but it's just none of it. No, it wouldn't, because it'd annoy the horse. I don't get it. Yeah, and I think in a tournament setting, there might be a short period of time where even if it's just walking into the arena, walking into the, the tournament, the tilting yard, where you have the thing hooked on some part of your arm. Oh, that was nice. You missed it. You just I was you missed I was it. At you. you missed it. <laughs> He'd so got it on the hook, he swung it around and he brought his hammer up and under. Same move, but he did it before. So I suppose a million dollar question. Would you buy one yourself? Would you go out and buy oh nice. I like that. Honestly, I mean, does it speak to you as a weapon? Because I'm not, from my, okay, I won't embarrass you. When I made it, I picked it up and went, I hate it. <laughs> so, 
I did hate it when I first picked it up, but it grew on me slightly, uh, a bit like some kind of disease. But it's, it's so different. I think when you've handled all the usual sorts of long swords and pole axes, and, it is really different, actually. Uh, it's familiar, but different. And I actually think within a tournament fighting scenario, they, they are really fun weapons to, to, to fight with and to play with. And if your background is primarily in longsword, for example, you can very easily adapt that knowledge to, to using one of these. Yeah, well, he did exactly that thing. He went, you know, he went into grapple, he punched. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Right. So even these, even these sort of half weight uh, wooden ones, they do pack quite a lot of punch. Yeah, you can feel it. Um, and so, you know, most of the people here are sort of, to some degree, pulling their shots. But that hits harder than the steel finish there. Even though one steel, it's just balanced in a different way. Mm. I keep comparing these to sledgehammers, but actually, of course, a sledgehammer is seven pounds all at the end. Yeah, and these are... the weight distribution is entirely, entirely different. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> and again. <laughs> but then what? But oh, then what? what? Next? <laughs> right. Well, Matt, actually, should we yeah. call it a day on that one? Yeah, I think? yeah, that's yeah. Good. So that's great. I mean, thank you very, very much, guys. That was absolutely brilliant to see. And uh, the trapping hook kind of worked, but kind of didn't. So give me your opinions. You catch it, but then you're also stuck. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you, sorry. Yeah. You trap, you you trap them and yeah. let it just go straight through. And, and yeah, yeah. So, the only I, advantage you've got is you might know it's going to happen, so you might be ready then with a rumble or something. Right. If you had the dagger, yeah. to bring that through. I mean, that's an interesting point, because if, if this was ever used in a mismatched weapon scenario, your opponent might not notice you've got that hook there. And I, I made a point about the fact that I think if it was a trapping hook, it should be bigger and this kind of thing. Well, you could say, well, if it's supposed to be a secret trapping hook, then you do want it to be yeah. quite small and similar. So, so the okay. swordsman might not notice it's there. So, on balance, my theory that it's a trapping hook might be correct, but <laughs> probably isn't. Can we settle on that one? Which yes, still, le we still leaves it as a complete mystery. What the heck is it? Right. It might be a trapping hook. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. We have learned so little today. Um, so when you were fighting Axe on Axe, how did you feel about it then? Were they, was it good? It's a very good fun fight with, yeah. because it's new and different than all the rest of it. I find, I think, with the real thing, you'd be able to grip and lock it in and trap it better. That's a fair point, actually, with the, with the real steel version. The, uh, the disparity between the, the projections and the thin shaft is greater yeah. than with these fatter shafts. And the, so I think you would, like you say, you'd be able to hook more easily with the, with the steel one. I'm yeah. hooking down, but it was disengaging at this point. And then, of course, as soon as I come up, the other guy comes up as well. Yeah. I think if it engaged best, you'd get them right down the ground and then come in for a... For a How would you feel about that if you were clearing a house out or defending a castle? or a sally port, or clearing the streets in St Albans, whatever it might be. I think it would be useful in close yeah. 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 something. It would be quite a formidable weapon to try and get You past. couldn't really swing it very much, though, could you, in a... No, perhaps no. not. But, but then again, it's, it's heavy, so maybe... Maybe in an area where you can't swing so much, like with a conventional pole axe, maybe having the extra mass might be mm -hmm. compensating. It depends on whether the other guy's got armour. Yeah. Like the armour, they hit him very hard. No. Um, well, we showed that in our, the first film we did. It takes very... Well, you were giving it some, but you could see it would take very little to make quite a big mess. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would not want to be hit by that thing at all. Armour or no armour, no. Especially in the helmet, because... Mm. The amount of force transference to your neck and, and just shock, you know, KO kind of force is, yeah, be horrible. Yeah. I found the hit got me out of trouble far more than I expected. Yeah. Particularly when you bang yeah. and suddenly the other person's hammer comes down to your head. I 100% found the same thing, mm. that it was, it was beautifully familiar to a longsword user and having that familiar sword hilt meant you could use it exactly like a longsword and it was very defensive. Okay. Closest we're going to get to an answer then, isn't it, really? <laughs> so it works very well, one on one, matched combat. Uh, I think we all agree that it's not 1653. Probably, we think, a tournament weapon.
I'll ride with that. It's good an answer as any. <laughs> so thank you very much. And thank you very much, guys. Thank and you. Matt from Scala Gladiatoria again. I don't know what the next one's going to be. With another weird weapon. Another we'll weird see. Weapon. I don't know. Throw the We've suggestions at us. We've got lots of ideas, but always yeah, happy yeah. To, to get more suggestions. Yeah, oh, I've got some I so want to do. Good. Um, anyway, another time. Cheers, guys. <laughs>